we it's just an interesting app in that it's it's kind of a shell in which you get to add in applications into some social context. Yep. So um, I'm going to add a social context, a group. And so it did something there. And so this is going to be my squash club. Uh, this is, is the social context. Yep. Now, then inside this club, how do I want to show up? People often call me Zippy, so we'll put that in. Okay, so now I've created a group. If you want to think about this in terms of things like Discord or Slack, this is just like creating a new server or a new Slack server or a new Mattermost server, right? You created this group on the left-hand side. And then what I can do instantly is I can add in these applets into this group. So I'm going to add in a calendar events applet. Now, all of a sudden, my Squash Club has calendar events. And so we could have using court one. Now let's add in another applet. Here I can talk, I can add in talking stickies. This is the, the thing that I was just talking about that I'm excited about. Here's talking stickies and talking stickies is a place where you can create little boards with stickies for running your meetings. Like you propose topics and then everybody votes on the topics. Now I'm going to put in, we want to add a new court and then people could vote on it. The thing to notice here is that these applets that shop popped into the library here, these are just Holochain applets, Holochain apps that have been repackaged to run inside of um, We. It's For developers, this is a pretty simple process to do and we're creating um, some tooling to make it even simpler to do. Invite a new member right up here. If you had gone, like I'm clicking back on the top left icon here, um, this is my public key and I'd copy it. If you have installed We, which you could do in just a second, and you could send me in chat your public key, then I could invite you and you show up inside this group and immediately you can choose to be part of the applets inside this group. So it's a way of creating a social context, a context for a group to decide on the kinds of functions that it wants to have. Does it want to have stickies? Does it want to have a calendar? Does it want to have chat? Think about it as, as Discord or Slack on steroids. Like this is like super easy groupware. It's okay. it's to me, it's like it's like the way I look at it is it's a surface area for social organisms. So in Discord, you know, they have bots and things like that that kind of upgrade the capability of chats. And if you look at Mattermost, they're adding in a couple new things at a time. They're adding in boards and so on. But this is the generalized platform for doing that because yep. anybody can create an applet, pop it into the into the Holochain Dev Hub and then App Store, and then it just shows up right here as an applet that's available for you to add to your group. And notice anybody can add an applet into the group. And that's safe because only the other people who want to join that applet in that group will, jo will join it. So let's add a second group in here. So this is a coder group. Mm -hmm. This is the squash club group. Now I'm going to add in a calendar uh, events for the coder group. So it's also got a calendar events in my coder group because we also have events that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, at 10 a.m., we're going to have a hackathon. Cool. Of course, what I've got now is I've got calendar events across two different groups, right? Mm -hmm. Because this is the way in which I'm looking at the the my world from a group-centric perspective. You see this little button here? This allows you to switch between group-centric and agent-centric mode. Mm, wow. so I, I flip that mode, and now yeah. if I have calendar events selected, I see the groups for mm. which calendar is installed. <laughs> and I can flip back and forth between those two groups, yep. or I can click over here on the merge eye view, and then I see which group they're part of together. Amazing. Now, this is pretty freaking incredible, which is it if is. you have a little bit of standards around this stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. you can say that across all of these apps, what is the agent-centric perspective that lets you see your viewpoint in this kind of application across all the social groups that use that application? So imagine mm -hmm. if you have to-dos, you have the to-do list app, that app, um, and you've got it in a bunch of different ones, you can merge them together or you can see the to-dos in that particular space just by flipping the axis of what you're interested in. Yeah, imagine you're, you've are you got a whole bunch of game networks and you're playing arcade-style games as applets and then you're able to see your scores across all games in a consolidated yeah, view exactly. as long as the data patterns are the same. Imagine, yeah, yeah. you're seeing chats across different groups as yeah. one streamlined chat. So I'm looking at my... 
Discord or my chat servers and I'm literally seeing all chats that I'm part of across all networks and stuff like that. That, that, uh, that are like the most recent ones or the ones yeah. where people have, have tagged you or whatever. Or you know, I've favorited, yeah, my favorited my chats. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. While talking stickies from like meetings across different teams or organizations or however I'm, yeah, wow, a group web for an agent-centric paradigm, huh? Well, the thing that it really does is it, to me, which I, I find really important, is it doesn't center agent centricity or group centricity. Yep. It allows both of them because yep. really both things are crucial. We need to live in the context of groups and we have to be able to see what we're doing in a group context. And we also want to see things from our agent centric perspective. We want to hold both of those things at the same time. So, but here's an important thing. Yes. So right now what we're seeing is we're seeing separate groups that have joined separate instances of these applets. Mm -hmm. So. The next step is how do you do federation between groups mm -hmm. where groups agree to have some kind of thing that they're doing together, not just individuals, but groups doing things that you had to do together. Like mm -hmm. right now, if I click on Squash Club, what I see is installed applets. I see the calendar events and the talking stickies. Now, wouldn't it be interesting that the way we're federating between different Squash Clubs is by having a shared calendar, mm -hmm. a calendar that is running in both squash clubs yep. that is the, the, the times when we're having our tournaments well we can't do it yet because i haven't finished completing that i mean the people mm -hmm. who are working on this with me haven't finished completing that work but what we, you will be able to do is when you add something to a, when you come into this window here where you see the calendar events there's going to be a button that's called federate and you can yep. federate this app into another group yep so instant and and what's fascinating about this is that it means that federating the notion of federating becomes as composable and as broad as the number of applications that you would federate by. Are you federating by having a shared talking space, which is installing the same chat into two different groups? Mm -hmm. Are you federating by a calendar? Are you federating by talking stickies, which means you have the same meeting agenda? Or are you federating by a monetary tracking system where you actually do mutual credit between the two groups? It's like the, the protocols of federation become super easy to add in. I think it creates a very powerful way of specifying how groups can interact mm -hmm. by just making it super easy to add the same app into both groups. Does that make sense? So that's federation. Yeah. The next step after federation, which I think is also super important with this, is forking. Mm -hmm. So you take a group and you're part of a group, but in fact, actually what you want to do is fork the data out of that group into a new group. Well, with all the chain, that becomes super easy. This is another thing you'll be able to do. You'll be able to come and click in here and say, fork, fork this group into a new group, create a new group and bring the data with it. Then other people who um, want to join into that new group can come into that new group as well. So this like extends the notion of forking in software from forking as a matter of changing the software, but also forking as a matter of expanding, the uh, of duplicating a group and bringing its data with. Sure. And again, you can just do that with full security because of the fact that you already have access to all that data. Oh, and then the other function I forgot to mention is we're going to have merge. You realize you federated everything together. You're really just one group. Once yeah. you've like once you federated all your apps, it's just one group. You just add the people together and merge. So you have that whole kind of biological expansion and contraction in social space. And by the way, the next thing that's going to happen after the forging, the federation and the forking is, is that these applets aren't going to be monolithic and fill up the whole screen. They're going to be composable in little bots, blocks. So then all of a sudden you have compo composable dashboards and that's a way cool thing. There.